Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us for our webinar today as we take a look at programming your CNC machines remotely. Today, our digital manufacturing gurus, Lindsay Morrison, our director of digital manufacturing, and Kirsten Waters, our digital manufacturing technical manager, are going to take us through a quick 30-minute session. Uh, but before they kick us off, there are a couple of quick housekeeping items to mention. First, even though we are going to try to keep this brief uh, on this lovely Friday afternoon, we do encourage you to try to type in any questions you may have throughout the webinar. So uh, in the GoToWebinar panel, you will see a question section. So just go ahead and type in your questions there as they come up. If we can't get to them live during the session uh, right now, we will be sure to reach out to you afterwards to get you those answers. We know that like us, many of our customers are now working remotely for the next little while. So we've been penciling in some additional online training sessions and webinars uh, that you can find in our online calendar on our website. So every Friday morning for the remainder of April, we're offering a complimentary What's New in SolidWorks 2020 session that runs from 9 to 11 a.m. online. So you or anyone in your team can feel free to register through for those uh, through your account manager or our online calendar. Uh, and we'll provide the link in the email that we'll be sending you guys after today's session. Um, for those on the call today that have an interest in learning a little bit more about digital manufacturing, we are also offering an hour long complimentary training session next week. So if that sounds like something you or somebody on your team may be interested in, uh, please send us a quick note in the chat here. Or like I said, you can follow up, uh, you can reply to the email that we'll be sending you with the recording after today's session. Um, so. Uh, with that said, I will pass things over to Lindsay to get us started. Perfect. Thanks, Jess. Um, so, yeah, basically, um, uh, myself, Lindsay, and Kirsten are just going to go through a little bit about um, the, the CAM softwares that are available inside of SolidWorks um, and obviously how we can uh, program those uh, remotely. So um, just to kind of start, uh, as Jess mentioned, we do look after the digital manufacturing side of things at CAD Micro. Um, so this is kind of our, our family of products, um, the SolidWorks MBD. So we're kind of starting basically after the, the design process. Um, so after your design, if you wanted to jump into um, MBD, this would allow us to essentially add in um, any kind of dimensions or tolerancing uh, that we want to add to that that uh, part. So instead of creating a 2D drawing, you're essentially creating that 3D drawing. Um, what we're going to be talking about today in um, more detail will be the SOLIDWORKS CAM and the CAM work side of things. Um, so that's in our CAM programming. So basically once we've finished with the MBD and we've got all of that uh, tolerance data, uh, we can essentially go ahead and start machining this or programming it for the uh, machine. Uh, we do also have the SWOOD product as well, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and then once we've finished programming this, um, if you are uh, taking that complete part and you are doing any kind of measurement, um, so with maybe a CMM or any kind of scanner, uh, that would be where we get into the solder inspection or the GOM um, products. So um, at the very end of the, the webinar here, uh, if you do, again, have any questions about any of these other products, please let us know. Um, and we can obviously set you up with some, some more information on those. Um, so like I said, again, today, we're going to be covering the SolidWorks CAM and CAMWorks. Um, so these are our main CAM products uh, that we carry at CAD Micro or that we um, provide support for. Um, and training. So basically with these CAM products, um, CAMWorks basically started uh, this CAM software alongside with, uh, alongside SolidWorks. Um, and basically what happened in 2018 was SolidWorks CAM uh, was created from CAMWorks. So SolidWorks wanted the CAM software inside of their uh, product suite. Um, so they purchased essentially the, the two and a half axis uh, portion of the CAM software. Um, so that's essentially what is um, included inside of SolidWorks now if you are on subscription and you have a version later than 2018. Um, so what this software is, is you can kind of see it's a seamless integration with SolidWorks. So um, we will look at the, the design tree here. So this obviously would look familiar to you if you are a SolidWorks user. Um, but we've got three new tabs on the end here, which are the CAM tabs. Um, so fully operational and fully integrated inside of SolidWorks. Um, and it's just a couple new tabs inside of your design tree and a new tab inside the um, command manager. Um, automatic feature recognition is one of our biggest selling features for the uh, CAM product. 
So basically what this does is it's very similar to the feature recognition inside of SolidWorks. Um, it will, instead of building your um, history tree or your design tree, uh, this is going to find all of the machinable features on that part. Um, we also have uh, included what's called knowledge-based machining. And again, Kirsten's going to go over uh, a demo of, of how this all works. Uh, but what knowledge-based machining allows us to do is essentially save our, our best practices, our machining best practices, back into the software. So what we can do is essentially say, okay, um, if I'm going to be machining in aluminum, I want to machine with a rough and a finish toolpath. Um, these are all the settings within those toolpaths that I want to save. Um, but if I'm machining in steel, I want a totally different set of uh, tool paths that I want to use. So um, you can actually save both of those sets of strategies back into the software. And when it recognizes those features in that specific material with whichever tool you've chosen, um, it's actually just going to bring that automatically up. So it's a machining strategy we can save into the software. Um, so you're teaching the software how you like to machine, essentially. Um, we also have a high-speed roughing tool path uh, called Volumel. Um, so you may have heard of this tool path. This is in uh, quite a few different CAM softwares out there, uh, but a really great option um, or a great addition to our software. Uh, we have tolerance-based machining. I was talking about the uh, SOLIDWORKS MBD um, previously. So basically what tolerance-based machining does um, is it reads the information, the tolerance information from your parts or the GD&T from your parts. Um, and it will actually allow you to apply different strategies based on the tolerance. Uh, so this is a really neat um, offering that they've included inside of SOLIDWORKS CAM and CAMWORKS. Um, and we are actually the only CAM software out there that is able to do this. So that's a really great feature that we've added to the, the software. Um, we also have the ability to do assembly machining. So um, not only can we just create uh, CAM programs on a part file, we can also create this on assembly features. Um, so what this allows you to do is we can download maybe the table of your machine or any of the um, fixtures or the vice or something like that um, from the actual manufacturer and you can bring that right into your assembly file, place your part in there and then program that part from um, the actual assembly. So this allows us to actually treat um, your clamps or your vice or whatever the work holding piece is um, as a fixture and we can avoid that area um, or make sure that we don't hit it with the tool pass. So the simulation would show that as well. Um, so the software is also fully customizable. So you can kind of see in the picture here, um, this is just the lead in lead out settings on a contour tool path. Um, we can go right into the tool paths and obviously fully customize them. Um, so again, if you are using those strategies that are already set up, um, all of that information would kind of be saved in there already, but you can obviously go in and adjust those um, as you're programming as well. Uh, we can create custom machines and tool cribs for your um, shop. Uh, we can adjust that settings such as the feeds and speeds, uh, machining patterns, your lead-in moves, um, entry motions, all of that information can be set up. Um, and post-process to communications and editing software. So um, the software actually comes with uh, an NC editor. So once you've posted your code, you can actually open up your G code into an NC editor, uh, be able to adjust the code if you need to, or just view it. Um, and there is actually a backplot option in there as well to, to view the actual G code. Uh, being simulated. Um, so this is basically the, the package suite that we have for both SOLIDWORKS CAM and CAMWORKS. Uh, so in the red here, these are our SOLIDWORKS CAM features. Uh, SOLIDWORKS CAM standard is included with your subscription of uh, SOLIDWORKS. So any version of SOLIDWORKS, uh, SOLIDWORKS CAM standard is included. The SOLIDWORKS CAM professional is um, a purchase product, uh, but this is again still a SOLIDWORKS CAM feature. Uh, and this is where you would get into the assembly machining, uh, four and five axis indexing, two and a half axis volume mill, so that high speed roughing tool path, as well as turning. Um, where you're gonna get into the cam works is more if you're getting into the three axis, full three axis cutting. So if you're looking for really um, nice surface finishes, uh, this is a really great option for your three axis machine, uh, milling machine. 
Um, we also have the option for turning professionals. So if you are programming any kind of turning machines or mill turn machines where you might need, you know, synchronous machining um, or just mill turn capabilities, this is a really great option as well. And then the last but not least, we do have the premium package, which includes both four and five axes simultaneous. Uh, so again, based on the needs of your package um, or of your machines in your shop, we can easily find uh, a module that will work for you. Um, if something, uh, maybe you wanna try just the SOLIDWORKS CAM standard for now, just to test it out, you can always increase um, or get different modules as you go. So it's a really great option. And again, if you guys have any questions about any of these packages or want us to talk to you about which one might be the best for you, um, we can definitely set up a call and go over that with you. Um, CAMWorks also does create uh, nesting programs. So this is called NestingWorks. Um, so NestingWorks, again, is fully integrated inside of SolidWorks. So you can see it's just a NestingWorks tab inside your command manager and we create the nest job from there. So again, this is going to create either a DXF file that we can out, uh, output just directly to DXF or we can actually create this into a SolidWorks assembly file where you can program using uh, SolidWorks CAM or CAMWorks. The last but not least, um, we do have the uh, software called SWOOD. Um, so basically what this is, um, is a, a woodworking software. Um, it's a really great option. It has both the SWOOD design and the SWOOD CAM. Um, if you are creating any kind of cabinetry or box goods, uh, what this allows you to do is essentially create the design using library features. So you're going to save back different library features and each of those features can be adjusted based on the size um, uh, that you're creating. So again, you can kind of create that, that original layout using sketches and then drag in your library features. Uh, so that's the SWID design portion of it. And then there is also the SWID cam. Uh, this will allow us to um, actually create full aggregates saw blades, you can simulate everything right within that, that um, software package. Um, and again, this is all right inside of SolidWorks, so it's fully integrated. Uh, this will also create full reports for you with all of your cut files, um, any kind of um, reporting or barcodes that you need to scan for those features as well uh, can be created. Um, and it also does obviously come with a nesting software as well, uh, which is this wood nesting. Um, so I'm just going to leave it there for now, um, and I'll pass it over to my colleague Kirsten, um, and she's just going to go through uh, the CAM side of it for you. Thank you, Lindsay, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, I'm going to be showing you how you can quickly and efficiently program a part using either CAMWorks or SolidWorks CAM, all while staying inside the SolidWorks environment. So the part that you see right now in front of you is a bracket. Um, and I just wanna take a minute before we get started to check out the design tree and to see actually how was this part made. Um, so I can see I've got a base extrude and I've got numerous cut extrudes as well that were created uh, to design all the features that you see before us. Now, I can also see if I look up that I've got one solid body so what exactly that does that mean? What is a solid body? Uh, we can look at a solid body as a collection of one or more surfaces and they're knit together so that they define a closed volume. So what we're looking right here at right here is a solid part. Uh, so let's get ju let's jump into our CAM portion. Um, as Lindsay mentioned, we do have an additional tab now inside of our command manager. Um, Depending on the branding, uh, what software package you have, this tab might say SolidWorks CAM. Mine happens to say CAMWorks 2020 because that's the active add-in that I'm using right now. Uh, and just like any other SolidWorks add-in, it's really easy to turn these off and on. Um, and I can choose to just turn it on for the single session, or I can choose to turn it on during my startup if I wanted to. Um, all the buttons that you see inside this command manager are going to like instinctively guide the user through the programming process. Uh, so we're going to start on the left hand side and we're going to do all the basic things that we need to address before we can start programming a part, uh, such as defining our machine, our coordinate system, and our stock manager. Uh, Lindsay also pointed out that we've got three other buttons here in our design tree. So this first guy is our CAMWorks feature tree. 
Uh, and this is where we're going to start today. We're going to start defining all of these settings so that we can then move into automatic feature recognition. So I'm going to I can either click these buttons inside the command manager. I could click, double click these buttons here inside of my CamWorks feature manager uh, to open up the dialog boxes and start inputting information. Uh, I can also alternatively right click. I'm just gonna go ahead and double click. Um, that's uh, the easiest method for me. And you'll see um, if you're already using CamWorks or SolidWorks Cam or you haven't started yet, you'll see there are so many ways to do one thing. So it really allows the user to uh, just decide what is easiest for them. So now the machine dialog box is uh, popped up and we're going to start on the left hand side. So this is where you're going to see all of the active machines that you can create inside your tech database uh, for your shop. Um, you can see below that it's going to show what is the active machine and as I click through some of these machines it's going to show me some information about the overall machine parameters as well. Uh, so for this demo, I'm going to be using my mill inch. Uh, I've confirmed it's active, so I'm going to jump over into the next tab. Now this takes me over to my tool crib. Uh, so once again, I can see what are the available tool cribs based on the machine that I chose. And I can also have a, an overview of all the tools that exist within that tool crib. Now I can edit this crib right now individually in my session. I can add or remove or edit the tools um, and then I can just uh, exit this part and never look at that tool crib again. But I also have the option of saving it so I can save it back to my tech database and I can use it again in the future if I choose. So right now I'm going to select tool crib 2 which is our inch. Uh, we've got 20 stations and now I'm just going to jump over to post processor so that I can find the post file that I want uh, for the universal post generator to basically post process the tool pass in this part. Um, you will have a list of available posts for your machines listed here uh, depending and you can automatically select one depending on the machine you selected in your first tab. So I'm going to stick with M3 Access Tutorial and I'm going to go ahead and select OK. So now I've got all of my main machine parameters set up. I've defined what machine I'm using, what tool crib I'm using, and what post I'm going to be using. Uh, the next thing I want to do is define my stock. So I'm going to double click that stock manager and I can see right at the top there is a material listed. So like Lindsay mentioned, if I want to associate a specific type of feeds and speeds for this type of stock, I can easily do so. But of course, that can all be overridden at the toolpath level if I wish. Uh, it's just a nice starting to position to be at uh, when you're considering what are the feeds and speeds I want to use. Now, inside of stock type, I have four different types that I can choose from. Uh, so I've got my bounding box. That's just going to create a rectangular bounding box around the perimeter of this part. Uh, I can use an extruded sketch. So I can actually create a sketch beforehand in SOLIDWORKS if I want. Uh, alternatively, I can also use a sketch that's associated with one of my design features. Uh, the last two options are an STL file or a SOLIDWORKS part file. Uh, STL would be good if I had a leftover stock from, say, a previous machining operation. I could capture that stock with an STL and then import it and just continue milling that stock in the next machining operation from where I left off. Um, also with a part file, if I had a very unique stock, I could easily model up that stock uh, externally in another part file or even inside this part as a configuration. And it's going to keep everything nice and neat and together. I can have my part, my stock, and all of my tool program, uh, all of my tool paths all traveling together in this one part. So today I'm going to use the first option, which is that bounding box. I can add stock to each individual axis if I wanted to, or I could use this plus button to uniformly add it uh, positively and minusly, minus to a, to a particular axis. I'm going to keep it just as zero uh, for all of these and press OK. Now the next thing I have to select is my coordinate system or my fixture coordinate system. Uh, where is that home position on my machine going to be? My zero, zero. So I'll go ahead and double click there and I can see that there's two ways in which I can define this fixture coordinate system. Um, I could use a, a SOLIDWORKS coordinate system that I'd already created uh, using the reference feature inside of uh, SOLIDWORKS or I can use a user defined and I can just select something on the fly right now. 
And a, a really great uh, uh, selling point of CamWorks is that I can literally put this origin wherever I want, and I can interact with my SolidWorks part, uh, selecting uh, vertices or lines enable, uh, in order to do so. Um, I can also select the part bounding box, vert, uh, part bounding box vertex, or uh, alternatively a stock bounding box vertex. Now, because I didn't add any additional material onto my stock, in this case, these are both the same. And this is, in, in fact, what I want to choose. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick this bottom left vertex inside my stock so that I can set that origin position. So I can see that my coordinates are not in the direction that they want them. Uh, so I'm going to start by defining uh, Z first, as that's typically the easiest to do. So I'm just going to click inside this Z box, and I'm going to select my top face. Uh, I can see that it's already flipped direction, and I'm happy with that direction, so I'm going to leave it. Uh, and this is an, uh, a Cartesian coordinate system, so I actually only have to select two axes, and that third one is going to be automatically defined. Uh, so next I'm going to choose my X. So I'm going to hop over, click this box here, and I want to select uh, one of the lines inside this part. So I'm going to select that line there, but I'm not happy with my X direction. So I'm just going to hit this reverse button here, and I'm going to flip it. Now I can see that X, Y, and Z are exactly how I want them oriented, and I'm ready to actually start programming this part. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So as a programmer, what would I do next? Well, if I'm using traditional CAM software, chances are I'm gonna to have to start making some considerations about this part. Like, I wanna know, uh, what is the overall length and width of this part? That's gonna determine what kind of cutter I'm gonna use for the outside contour. Uh, also, depth matters. Um, what are the dimensions of these holes? Can I use these as drilling operations? Are they blind or are they through? Uh, what size drill bit would I have to use and how long would it have to be to be able to clear these holes. Um, also this pocket, uh, what, are the, what are the rads on these corners? Uh, do I want to start with a bigger bit and then maybe go in with a smaller bit? Because as you can see, it's a, a very irregular. But the great thing about CamWorks is I don't actually have to make these considerations. I can go ahead and I can click this button up here, extract machinable features. That's going to initiate the automatic feature recognition. And basically CamWorks is going to go into my uh, design tree. It's gonna examine all of these different design features. It's gonna pull that information that I use to create those features. And it's gonna consider that information and apply automatically an operation or multiple operations. And it's gonna select the tools I'm gonna to need for these operations too. So I'm gonna go ahead and press that extract machinable features button now. Okay, so I can see that uh, I'm still in my CamWorks feature tree and all of these blue operations have shown up. Uh, beside them in brackets, I can see what we call a strategy. A strategy is essentially a sequence of machining operations. So it's found this perimeter boss and it's determined it wants to use a finished strategy, which is essentially one toolpath and that would be a contour toolpath. Uh, for for circular pocket, it's found a rough, rough rest finish strategy. So in this case, when I go to generate these operation plans, I'm actually gonna have three operations created for this one circular pocket. Uh, an initial rough, a rough rest to, to clean up any material that was left behind, and then that finish contour. And of course, before I generate these operations, I can easily adjust any of the strategies if they're not what I'm looking for. Uh, so I'll go ahead and I'm just going to leave everything as is. Uh, oh, and one other thing I did want to point out to you guys is it found my mill part setups as well. So it knows that I have features on the top of this part. This is the machining direction in which I'm going to uh, uh, mill these features. But it also found a mill part setup too. So it found this bottom feature, which I might not have even known was there had I not uh, properly rotated this part around. So it's a, nice, uh, it's a nice bonus to be able to right away see how many different setups am I going to need before I can machine this part. So I'm going to click Generate Operation Plan. Now all those uh, strategies are now turned into operations and it's automatically jumped over to the operation tree to show me that. Uh, I can see here that uh, I have two contours that have been added based on my second mill part setup. I don't actually want one of those, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna delete it because I'm already milling out the perimeter when I do the first mill setup. Uh, 
that's going to jump right into the recycling bin and it'll just stay there. So if I want to restore it at any time, I can. Uh, next, I'm going to generate toolpaths. I'm going to click this button. And now I can see all of the toolpaths, almost all of the toolpaths have turned black. Uh, I can hover over them and I can see the individual toolpaths associated. But what about these blue guys here? Uh, I'm going to right click them and I'm going to find out what's wrong. Unable to compute safe lead in or lead out move. Disable gouge check and define lead in or lead out manually. Okay, so I'm gonna double click this contour mill. Basically, uh, the lead in that has been assigned uh, just based on the operation parameters that are defaulted, uh, it doesn't have actually enough room to, to safely create this lead in without gouging the part. So I'll just jump to the lead in tab really quickly. I can see my lead in mount is based on a percentage, but I'm just gonna change that to 0.1 inches. I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. I'll double click the other contour mill and I'll just do the same as well. And hopefully that's gonna clear that error and I'm gonna be able to generate all of these toolpaths. Now I'll just right click that, generate toolpath, and right click, generate toolpath. Uh, so now I'm actually, I've got all of them. Uh, I can see the toolpath indicated with blue and uh, the start of that toolpath indicated with red. So, I'm going to simulate these for you guys now, but before I do that, I just want to do a quick sorting operation because uh, the way in which they're listed here is not how I would want to machine these. Um, so I'll hit the sort operations by right clicking the mill part setup one. And I'm just going to hop over and sort by center drill, then drill, and then I just want to make sure that my roughing is coming before my contour mill. I'm going to go ahead and click apply and I can see it sorted it for me. So I'm happy with that and I'll click OK. Now I'm gonna simulate these for you guys. Uh, we have tool mode or we have turbo mode, but I wanna show you guys a, a fast simulation. So I'm gonna stick with tool mode for now. So as you can see, it showed me uh, milling on the top and the bottom of this part. Uh, a couple uh, things to note inside this simulation window. Uh, I can easily uh, choose how I want to encounter a collision if an, a collision is going to incur, occur. I could choose to ignore it, I could cut it, or I could pause. And, th and this is <clears throat> for the cutting portion of the tool, for the shank or the shoulder, and also for the tool holder as well. Uh, there's also this display button here, and it's going to show me what was my original stock, <clears throat> uh, which is represented in green, and do I have any stock that's left over, or have I overcut any areas on this part, uh, which would be represented by these warmer colors up here. I can actually see that there's this continuous fillet around the part, which hasn't been cut. So I'm going to quickly go over and, and add that in. I can also see that I have an undercut area inside this blind hole. Remember that we used a drill bit to cut this hole. Uh, and because we did not have the tip, the tip of the drill bit length added, then that is why we have an undercut area here. So I'm going to press OK to exit my simulation. And I just want to show you guys, it's so easy to use automatic feature recognition, but it's just as easy to interactively add in a feature if we need to. So I'm going to hop back into my Camworks feature tree. I'm going to right click my mill part setup one, and I'm going to choose to add in a 2.5 axis feature. I want to add in a feature around this boss. So I want my type of feature to be selected as boss. Um, and then I need to select the, the part geometry to identify, okay, where is the feature? Uh, so you can see here, see here under my selection filter, I have an edge selection set to open chain. I'm going to go ahead and select the edge underneath that fillet. Sorry, I actually want that to be a uh, convert to loop. So I'll go ahead and select that edge. It's going to convert it to a loop. And then I can go and click end condition to set how deep is this feature. Well, the feature ends at the top surface. So I'll go ahead and select that top surface to define the portion of it. Uh, it's selected a finished strategy, which is fine with me. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now I've got that new feature. I can right click that feature and just add a 2.5 axis mill operation. Uh, in this case, my only option is a contour mill. 
Now I want to use a, a corner round uh, to mill that fillet, but I don't see a corner round in here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in, add a new tool. It's going to pull up this really vast tool database that exists inside your TechDB, um, and I'm going to select corner round. I just quickly want to find out what is the what is the radius of that fillet. Uh, it's 1.125, 1 8. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select a corner round uh, with an eighth inch radius and press OK. <clears throat> so I have my feature defined, that irregular boss one. I've got my tool. And now I'm going to check, yes, I want to use my TechDB default uh, to pick an operation plan. I don't want to edit the operation on creation. I just want to create it. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to generate that tool path. Uh, before I simulate this for you guys again, I just want to go in here and I want to add that, that drill bit tool length. So I'm going to find out which, which path, which tool path do I want to edit. Uh, looks like I want to edit drill one, so I'll just double click drill one. And under feature options, I can see add tip length. So I'll go ahead and press OK. It's, gonna, it's going to uh, go past that blind pocket the length of the tip. Now I'm going to take you guys back into another simulation so we can see what does our part look like now. And I'll show, uh, I'll select show difference. And things are looking pretty good, just as expected, because that tooltip was not modeled into that blind pocket or blind hole, uh, it's going to show as overcut. But that's okay. It's what I expected and it's what I want. I can see that the bottom of my part is finished as well. So now I can go ahead and I can uh, post process the, these tool paths and get this sent to my machine. So for now, I'm just going to post process the mill part setup one. I'm going to right click, select post process. Uh, this is going to allow us, first, we're going to select where do we want to save this file. So I'll just save that to my desktop. And now underneath options, you can see that there's this little drop down and I can choose to open this G code in, inside the Camworks NC editor. So you guys heard Lindsay make reference to that before. Now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna fast post process this using the universal post generator that comes free with your software. And I can go ahead and click okay. And now it's going to open up inside of the Camworks NC editor. Uh, here I'm going to be given a lot of basic and more complex functions as well. I can do things like uh, jump to the next tool change or jump to the previous. Um, inside NC functions, I can do renumbering, advanced renumbering. Um, I can also adjust my feed rates and my spindle speed. Also inside this back, back plot area, uh, I can select the back plot window. That's going to open up. And I'm going to be able to, to ensure that I have NC verification before this part, before this file ever hits the machine. I want to back plot it and make sure I know all the machine moves that are going to happen. And I'm going to be in control of how this program is run. Okay, uh, so basically, in a nutshell, that's it from start to finish. Uh, Camworks is going to pull that same information that we use to create our features, and it's going to apply machining features to it with associated operations. Uh, it's going to save us a lot of time because we are not going to be uh, wasting time with repetitive programming tasks that uh, are really going to like bog us down, especially if we're working from home. We want that extra time to be able to check in our machines, uh, check in in our operators, and make sure that everything's running smoothly, and not spend so much time having to just program repetitive repetitively um, so yeah that was my uh, demonstration thank you guys so much for watching
Awesome. That was wonderful. Thank you so much, Kirsten and Lindsay. Um, everyone, thanks so much for joining us today. Please keep in mind that Lindsay and Kirsten are offering a complimentary one-hour online training session on digital manufacturing next week. Uh, if you haven't already put your hand up in the chat box uh, for the details, you can feel free to respond to the email that we'll be sending you a little bit later with today's recording, and we can take it from there. We'll also include in that email a link to our other online uh, uh, sessions that we have coming up through our website, calendar so you can check out what we have going on through the month of April. Once again, thank you everyone for joining us today. Thanks, Kristen. Thanks, Lindsay. Uh, we hope you all enjoy the rest of your Friday afternoon and have a great weekend. Thanks. Bye.